Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. This is your future favorite potato, just another potato. And welcome to another video of Enigmatica 9 Expert. And today, we are getting into the stage 3 of the Tree of Life. And hopefully, build our super critical face shifter. <laughs> I almost forgot the name. But before that, uh, because we are basically entering the the very 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 last stretch of the mod pack i am already thinking of which mod pack to play after this so the, the idea is that we will have one well this episode a second episode a third episode so maybe four four episodes four more episodes apart from this one and then one last uh, episode uh, that would be basically a small review and maybe some tips that I might uh, I might have found useful to know uh, whenever I started uh, the mod pack. So yeah, basically we are five videos away of finishing the mod pack and finishing the series. So I have some options for which is going to be the next mod pack we are going to play. The first mod pack I'm thinking of playing is FTB Skies Apps Expert. So basically it has. A bit of everything. It has some magic mods. It has some technology mods. Uh, it is a sky clock pack, and my goal for that mod pack would be to just 100% that, just like uh, Enigmatica 9 that I'm doing right now. So that means getting uh, the piña colada. The next mod pack that I am interested in is Cosmic Frontiers. It is an in development mod pack still. It is in early access, I think. And it is a great tech based mod pack. A progression until now, I think, is up to EV or IV stages. So, because it is still in, in development, uh, my main goal in that mod pack would be to reach the EV age and craft one EV machine hold. That would be the, the main goal. The next option is FTV Interactions. It is quite an old mod pack now. And it is a uh, it is the, the very grindy style kind of Greg Tech mod pack. It has although its main base is Greg Tech, it has a lot of other mods uh, to go for. It has some magic mods and stuff like that. And my main goal in that in that mod pack, it wouldn't be to, to complete it because of, you know, it's very grindy, uh, but rather get into Luna. So just travel the, to, to the moon. That would be the the main goal uh, for that mod pack. And my last option is Hard Rock Terra Firma Craft. So a mainly Terra Firma Craft mod pack based. You know, just like Terra Firma Craft itself is a very, very survival. Uh, uh, survival like with a lot of real life um, mechanics and again it's i think it's also very grindy but in a different way because of the terra firma craft nature and the goal for that mod pack would be to get the mecha suit so basically i think it's reaching nuclear stage so yes it, it is very into into the mod pack so for most of those mod packs my goals aren't to complete the, the mod pack itself but rather just advance as much as I can. And independently of which mod pack I will be playing, uh, my goal could be extended. So for example, imagine I play uh, I play FTV interactions. My goal for now would be to reach Luna. But maybe if I reach Luna and I carve for more interactions, then I would extend the, the goal maybe into completing the mod pack. Uh, the same goes with comments from tears if i see, if i play that mod pack and i if i see i like it until i get the ev machine hold and i see that the progress uh, of the development of the mod pack uh, is extended so maybe to cpm module or something like that um i might as well just continue playing that mod pack the same goes with terra firma craft if i see that uh, getting the mecha suit uh, was fun and i want to keep going and I'll just keep going until the end of the mod pack. FTV Space Expert, it doesn't seem to be a very, very grindy map, very grindy mod pack. 
not as grindy as uh, the great tech options and terra firma craft uh, so that's why the goal would be to 100% it just like i'm doing with enigmatica 9 those are the options and i might put a poll in the description and in the in a pinned comment uh, so you, maybe you can help me choose uh, with which uh, mod pack to play i'm very very interested in those four mod packs but i cannot play all four at the same time <laughs> i have to choose one sadly uh, so yeah um if you want to help me choose you can vote on the poll i'll be linking in the in the description with that said in the previous episode here we have our mode of or pandemonium uh, system yes and it seems it is off i've changed from 32 packets of pandemonium to 128 especially because i I've, I've done the the school farm and as you can see if we come here pandemonium i've been uh, crafting so much pandemonium and, and i'll still be uh, batch crafting them like this and this will be uh, keep processing more uh, pandemonium for us i could just take out the level emitters right now in both uh, in both lines in the nether star line and in the pandemonium line and i could make a regular pandemonium on uh, on passive and then level emit this uh, this machine here um but yeah, i think it's just fine uh, how we are doing it right now and at the end pandemonium we are going to be using this uh, in the future in order to make ethereum so i think it's best to to batch craft them uh, for now now if we come here i know this is not <laughs> very aesthetical at all <laughs> together with this tower and this uh and these huge bots <laughs> it's not very aesthetical but again now that we are in the last stretch of the mod pack um yes i've been kind of i've been a bit uh, a bit lazy <laughs> on doing this stuff so this is the small school farm i have set up here from time to time i have to come to, to make some some maintenance but yeah this generates us a bunch of school as you can see it's very simple it is very simple, maybe there is another way of doing this but I think I have the resources so I just decided to do this like this we have this spawner, this zombie spawner as you can see this is at ultimate tier that means that it will spawn uh, the most zombies at, at, as it can in the least amount of time just as with our blaze spawner we have belts that are going to be transporting the zombies out of the spawning area as quick as, as possible and we have here a falling chamber uh, which the zombies will be will get killed uh, thanks to that uh, pointed rich stone uh, down there using these spawners they also spawn some zombies with armors and they also spawn baby zombies and uh, chicken jockeys so below the pointed rich stone we have a modular rotor with um, I, well, with any sword and an activator module that will just try to kill the, the zombies that remains around without being killed and in the, and in the sides we have some modular rotors uh, basically all the modular rotors are the same I'm buffering them with some stone they have a placer module which will place a stone into the into the block in front and then whenever the zombies get killed uh, these school banes will transform the the stone into skulk thanks to the catalyst here below and the breaker model will break the skulk dropping it as, as a block thanks to the sick touch and this vacuum later will recollect the skulk which will transport it through this entangled block to this uh, drawer here where we are storing the skulk these two routers, they are basically one for stone and one for the, for energy distribution. This one distribute, distributes the stone. And in order to keep up with the stone, uh, stone consumption, I made here a small stone chamber. And as you can see, <laughs> this has a lot of stone. <laughs> and it can store a lot of stone. 
So that's how we are generating Skulk. Very simple, very simple. Now for this episode, I want to do two important things. The first one is getting into the third stage of the Tree of Life. And after that, I want to craft and maybe, maybe start, uh, start up this uh, super critical phase shifter. So as always, for each uh, stage of the Tree of Life, we need a, a, a shard. In this case, we need the shard of rebirth. This is quite an expensive craft, <laughs> uh, but I've been already uh, batch crafting some of this stuff. This one's the, the this one, the soul steel blocks were the most expensive by far. Not even the, the nitro crystals. Now that we have a school farm, this is very, very cheap to craft actually. So there is not much problem with this. The problem is, is with the soul steel blocks. This is very, very expensive. <laughs> uh, but we're still missing the modes and the spawner core. And I think we can start with the spawner core first. So we already made one of these and I need one more soul crystal. What? Oh, with the spawner core, we should be able to craft this. And if we come to our pneumatic craft setup, um, we can use this one here. <laughs> we can use this one very, very quick. And we can request some essence. This should be enough essence for the craft. And we can grab, we can grab one of these spawner cores and put it in here. And with this, we should have our spawner core. So here we have this also quickly done. <laughs> uh, a spawner thing, and I've just noticed this is not uh, centered. <laughs> oh, we have this spawner here, and we have a bacon trap. The only way we can we can um, build this spawner core is through a bacon trap. So we can put our spawner core in here and whenever a mob enters the area of the bacon trap it will absorb the, the mob and put it inside the spawner core building this one up. So what we can do is here I have a very basic um, arcane compressor system. Let me grab very quick my, my energy setup and this should power the thing, yes. And they just start to to generate some some pressure. No, once this uh, vacuum tube model reaches two of pressure, this will start receiving negative pressure. As you can see now, this is turning on and off, on and off. And yes, I'll just let this one build some negative pressure before starting to use this. So I think this is good a good place to start at. Minus seven, five, seven, six pressure. So we can just put our salt crystal. This is a wither skeleton salt crystal, as we need a wither skeleton 100% spawn core. And this is at ultimate tier. So we'll spawn as quick as possible. Let's see. And if we open the vacuum trap. Oh! How cool! Okay, and it seems it's uh, one mob, uh, one percent maybe. So yeah, we will just uh, le let this one run while we do other stuff. So, using this small setup <laughs> that we le left uh, before, we are going to be crafting our our modes of what's the name again? Modes of rebirth. And finally, we can request our modes of reverse. Two hundred fifty six potions of regeneration. Oh, 
Oh, this is so slow. Oh, this will take so much time. <laughs> so while that is crafting, how is the the wither skeleton going? Is full? Yes, this one is full. And I can deactivate this spawner. And we can just retrieve our spawner core. Now of course I'll just leave this one here. Because for the for the final uh, for the final stage we will be needing a lot of cores. <laughs> a lot of cores. So I'll just leave uh, that one there. So while the mods are crafting, maybe we can start looking at the crafting of the SPS. It is <laughs> it is quite big, <laughs> quite big of a craft. I already have the structural craft as a as a pattern. So we can request 129. <laughs> I think I'll batch craft the concrete. Yeah, so yes, I'll stop the preparations for the SPS uh, for now because we should have all of our modes crafted. Yes, very nice, very nice. And what we can do is set an encoding pattern. Uh, take any of these uh, receipts here, for example this one, and let's throw everything in there. And let's get our chart. And there is it, Shard of Rebirth. Death follows life, and life thrives on death. Such is the circle of all things. The Tree of Life is not exempt from this cycle either. An infusion of souls would likely do it wonders at this stage. Nourish this tree once more, and prepare to travel to the home of the Enderman, in search of the final regions required to fully restore it. Let's grab all of our things. And we are here. <laughs> One, two, three, four spirits of birth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight celestial bull. And the shard of rebirth. And that's it. The third stage of the Tree of Life. So with this, we get into the very, very last stretch of the mod pack. That means getting Aetheric Brass Ingots <laughs> and Aetherium. Mm. We are near, we are very near to the end. So let's grab our hundred. 23 <laughs> or 123 structural glass. Let's put it there. 
we need two SPS casings. Um, but first, we need the Supreme Machine Frame. And for this, we already have Nitro. We already have Adept Artificing Blocks. We already have Ingots of the Depth. We already have Quasi Compact Artificing Blocks. Also Quicksilver. We are only missing the Runic Manifold uh, from the Marit. The Marit. Merci, 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 Thorn. Hello, my friend. Very fast. <laughs> oh, I need to do 512 <laughs> of these uh, mixer craftings. Do I have an unoccupied mixer somewhere here? I mean, I have this mixer here. <laughs> I could just uh, join the the water from here. Yes, I think I'll do that. So if I put um, this liquid concrete in here, and if I give this concrete one space in any of these storage uh, cells, I should be able to craft the SPS casing. Let's see. One stack. I need some osmium, gravel. And that's all. Need 35 more of gravel. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I am out of osmium again. This hurts. <laughs> this hurts so much. Now with all of this, now I should be able to craft the stack of casings that I need. <laughs> so expensive. 944 steel wires. <laughs> if I put start, everything should be just crafting. <laughs> Can I request the supercharge? Yes, I'll just put that on craft. And now I'll take these four SPS casings that I already have craft. And we are going to get the the SPS ports. Oh! With all of these materials. A bit expensive some of them. <laughs> We should be able to craft our SPS ports. Now the only thing we are waiting on are on the casings. So let's find let's find a place for for our our multi-block. So I think I'll build the SPS in this place here. I've already finished crafting the the casings. So we can just do it. We have to put our SPP ports now. I'll do one here. And then two in here. And inside we have to push we have to put the supercharged coil. And this should be everything. <laughs> well, now is everything. 
And there's it, our super critical face shifter. Very nice, very nice. Here's the SPS. I've already kind of connected a ME system. I'm actually just connecting the, the P2P channel that I have linked to our auto crafting system. It's not that we are going to be using a lot of the channels in order to produce um, Ethereum. But um, I had this space opened and it was quite empty. So here is our SPS. Uh, yes, our super critical face shifter. That's the name. <laughs> so here I'm going to try first and use our regular modular router system in order to give energy. This will spend so much energy. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. It will spend so much. That's why I'm going to <laughs> maximize the phases of the modular router <laughs> in order to produce as much energy as I can. So let's give this nine speed upgrades. Let's start with 16. Maybe 16. Or a stack of energy upgrades. Let's start with 32 uh, energy upgrades. 32,000 FE per tick, per router tick. And this will tick every two regular ticks. Now, I don't know if the stack upgrade is also useful for this, uh, but I'll craft them just in case. Connect this into our router. And we are getting energy into this SPS port, which is the one that is going to um, provide with energy to all of the process. And these two other SPS ports are for import and exports of the liquids. So I suppose Ethereum will be a chemical. Yes. We can put this back here. And what we should be able is to export pandemonium. Yes. Oh, it is dying. <laughs> it is dying. I mean, it is quite processing. It needs a bit more, so let's put the other half stack. Maybe an, I need a second... A second modular router. <laughs> Yeah, now it's producing a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit better. And with this, we should be producing Ethereum. Yes, we had, we have a tenth of a bucket. <laughs> it's such a slow process. Hundred millibuckets is one millibucket of Ethereum. Uh, so basically, one bucket is just ten millibuckets. You know, it's lower than before. So, I think I know what's the problem <laughs> and why it was uh, not producing enough. And I forgot that it produces more whenever it has more aura around. So, yeah. <laughs> we depleted the amount of aura in this zone. So I've just built a quick um, aura logistics system here, as you can see. And now everything should be working just fine. I just need to put back the the jars and this will be back to producing a lot and we can put both and this is eating up all of our <laughs> all of our pandemonium nice <laughs> very nice very nice muffle this <laughs> and Yes, we are getting Ethereum. The good thing is that we have a good backup of Pandemonium. But I think we should still... Um, yes, we should level emit this very quick. Yeah, we should do something like this. So whenever this, uh, this finds that our levels of Pandemonium is below 48, 
it will emit a redstone signal. And of course, we also need to put this a redstone card. So there is it. We are producing Ethereum. How much Ethereum do we have right now? Almost half a bucket. <laughs> it is crazy how expensive this is. I wonder if this keeps up with only two. Yeah, I think it, it will keep up with only two resonating crystals. I want to use the least amount of resonating crystals so it doesn't consume that much aura. Uh, but yeah, most likely I'll be building two or even three more modular rotors for energy uh, in order to make this process a bit quicker. Because yes, this is this is slow. <laughs> this is a slow. And yeah, <laughs> Mod modes of Ethereum is not something cheap. <laughs> it's one bucket of Ethereum. It is very expensive. So for the next episode, some stuff I'll be changing is first, um, I'll build one extra, one or maybe two more spawners for this uh, zombie farm, in order to get uh, more zombies coming quicker. The next thing I have to kind of try and solve is um, this. So let me just close this very quick. Now, as you can see, and this is a problem that I've also just noticed uh, today, the distribution system of the stone is not distributing quick enough. And that's a problem because these breaker modules, what they will do is whenever they break a block, it will get into the buffer. And we don't want that. So what I will do is trying to find a way of Avoiding the, the skull to be filled. I think it's just too much stack augments. So we can just halve this. And thus this will just uh, send 8 items per tick. And yes, and I, I think this will solve the problem. <laughs> just this. So I think just reducing the amount of stack augments into these modules will solve the problem. As inside the buffer, the max amount of items, of the stone items that can uh, that can be stored are 64. So I suppose that the the modular router would only attempt to send items whenever this had zero items, so we can fill the 64 blocks at once. I think that's why it, it wasn't working and it wasn't refilling. So having eight. Eight, um, 8 items per outer tick, I think it's going to be best. And this should be producing echo shards a bit quicker now. Of course, we still need to, to first make this produce uh, the echo shards a bit quicker. And as you can see, we are out of pandemonium. <laughs> this is so crazy. So quick. We have our first bucket of Ethereum. So yeah, we will. I'll have to, to speed up the process of pandemonium. I don't. I. I mean, I, I don't think it, it will be that hard to process. I'll just put a couple more of crystallizers, and that's all. But anyway, in the next episode, we will enter into the etheric transmutation chamber. This is just too crazy. <laughs> uh, with this, we can kind of make some cheap stuff um, I think the, the most interesting ones will be first carbonate crystals a royal, royal jelly diamonds and especially these two the mode of wisdom and the block of aetheric brass I think those are the only interesting ones then we also have of course the the infinity tools but I don't know if if I want them <laughs> I really don't know if I want them. I think I'm happy with my mecha tool and my pneumatic jackhammer. I don't know, I'll, I'll see. I'll see. I, I don't think I'll need them. But yeah, the goal for next episode is getting the aesthetic transmutation chamber, aesthetic brass, and, may, and maybe preparing to visit the ant. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think these two are going to be quite fast to 
to get. I'll see what I do. <laughs> and with this, what was the name? Super critical phase shifter and some Ethereum being craft. This is the end of the episode. I hope you enjoy it. I enjoy it really much. This machine is really new to me and it's pretty cool. I really like the the lighting just going out and just electrifying whatever it is electrifying. But anyway, if you're still here, thank you for watching and I hope you have a better day because it can always be better and I'll see you next time. Bye.